Welcome back. As you can see now, I'm just adding the fine beams of light. I'm alternating here between a Stabilo Carbothello pencil and a Conti stick. Both of them leave a very fine layer, very fine layer of pastel, and that's what I need at this point. Pastel is a beautiful medium for glazing with. If you don't know what glazing is, it's just skimming over one colour on top of another, not to obscure it, but just to alter it. You can still see what's underneath, but you're just tinting it or covering it up. It's perfect for, say, a fog going over some trees or something like that. And that's pretty much what we're doing here. We're just putting a thin mist over those trees because that's what we've got here. We've got this mist that was rising, the morning mist, the sunlight was passing through that mist and making it um, much more opaque than air would normally be. So we've got sort of a clouding effect going over the distant forest. And it's not a uniform mist like a fog either. It's, uh, it's variable. There's so many variables in this little section. We've got thinner mist down towards the bottom end and it's more opaque up at the top. So what I did, I skimmed over some very fine layering of pastel with the white and now I'm just tinting back in a little bit of colour concentrating to put more between the beams making those light beams stand out that little bit more which is just the way we want them we want it to be a delicate transition from the colour of the forest to catching the light beams back to the colour of the forest and so on it is as I say quite a delicate operation perhaps the most delicate part of the whole painting so it's worth spending a little bit of time on something like this just so that we get the right effect. I talk a lot about balance in a painting and what we're doing here is actually about balance as well. We're balancing the degree of colour that we're going to have in certain areas. Now where the light beams are going through this mist there's not a lot of colour but where the light beams are less pronounced there's more of those greens and blues that are able to penetrate the mist and so that's what we're doing we're just creating that balance just adding those colors putting them back so at first we were quite quite arbitrary we just put the white all over but now we're applying a bit of a bit of fine tuning and a bit of balance
I think when you're painting anything that's complex, what you need as the artist is to have control, to feel that you're in complete control of what you're doing and not that it can slip away from you and run away, suddenly turn to mud or <clears throat> suddenly go off on a tangent that you really don't want. One of the ways that I get such control is by working so lightly my touch is so fine and so light and every stroke that I make, I'm judging it all the time just to make sure that we're always moving in the right direction. So I notice anything if it's not quite right and I'll pull back before, before disaster strikes, if, if you like. Control. Control comes through taking your time with something, going in, the way I do it anyway, is by going tiny little incremental steps, all of them in the right direction. And any bolder strokes are only made at the end, when I know exactly how everything looks in relation to everything else within the painting. That's when I'll make the final bolder strokes, if and when required. In part one, I talked a little bit about the decision that you have to make, whether you're going to start your painting either with sticks or with pencils. The same applies to whatever you're painting. When you paint a lot in pastel, you'll find that you're painting a lot of different elements. One moment you might be painting rocks, another you might be painting trees, or a portrait, or fur on an animal. And with each different thing that you try to render in pastel, what you'll realize is that the same approach doesn't always work for all these different elements. There isn't any single magic formula. So you have to be adaptive and flexible. What you have to do is assess the part that you're about to paint and ask yourself, now, what's the dominant feature here? If it's very, very complex, then I might edge towards starting with pencils. Supposing it's the spots on a leopard and there's lots of complex fur. Yeah, maybe do some pencil work first on something like that. On the other hand, if something is very rich and bold in colour, there isn't a lot of point in starting with the pencils, you might as well go for the power of a stick straight away. These are the decisions that you have to make on your own for every different thing that you paint. And this is a skill that you will acquire as you gain experience using pastels. It'll become second nature before too long. And the same can be said for developing your sense of how much pressure you're applying with your pastels. I'm, most of the time, my touch on the surface is very, very light. But if I want a bolder mark, I'll press more strongly on the surface. And that there's a tremendous variable quality to pastel. And you'll develop a sense for that as well over time. You'll also develop a sense for the layering process with pastels. In general, what we do is we lay down a base colour and tone. And what I always try to do is get that as accurate as possible. And then we tweak the colours with other layers and we add detail on top of that layer. And that layering process is something we'll go into in a little bit more detail later on. You'll see me using it many times and hopefully that will unlock the door for you to produce some great work of your own. Accent colours give me control once again. 
It's a tremendous way of having control over the exact hue of your colours. If a green, say, is slightly too blue, we can knock it back with a thin skimming of orange or the other way round. It's all about the ability to be able to minutely adjust and therefore have control over what we're doing. And notice once again how I turn to a pastel stick rather than a pencil as we get towards the final strokes that I make. I nearly always finish off with a, with a pastel stick. Always remember that it's the sticks that are loaded with pigment. They're much more powerful and stronger than the pencils. And you see me here just blending very, very gently with my finger. This is one of the most beautiful things I think in using pastels is that you've got this tactile feel with the surface. You can push it around and just soften things. Softness is so important in a painting. It's not always the fine, sharp details that make something look real. Often it's that soft touch that really matters. And I prefer always to blend things with my hands rather than the tools that you get with, um, say, pan pastels, for instance, those circular discs of color and you get these little spatulas that you can blend with. I don't really use those a lot. I, I, I do prefer the blending that you get with your finger because that tends to push one color into another whereas those tools I always feel seem to take as much of that pastel away as they blend and for that reason I prefer to blend with my finger. Now as the painting progresses I'm moving on to the main tree which is a real feature because this is the tree that's catching those rays of sunlight coming through so here we're going to need very bold very bright colors in those highlights so i'm going in with that very bright yellow stick and here i'm just glazing over a little bit of atmosphere because even though it's bright it's still in that mist and we need to represent that So I went in brightly there with a pastel stick straight away to get some rich colour in that base tone. And now we're just using some pencil on top just to put some a little bit of detail and a little bit of shadow. The important thing is that our base tone is roughly the correct tonal value. Tonal values are super important in a painting perhaps the most important thing. So we get the right tonal value with that base layer and on top of that we can put in these little bits of detail and tweak the colours. Edges are always vitally important elements in 
any painting, you must always pay attention to edges. Think about whether it's better to have a soft edge or a hard edge. It all depends, doesn't it? Here, this bright tree is standing boldly out against that background. And so our edges need to be quite well defined. So I was just using that gray there to refine the sharper edge along the top of the tree line. And now I'm picking out with the white Conte even more brighter highlights. And also, you see, in a painting, highlights alone don't really stand for much. You need that counterbalance on the other side. So you need the darker underneath section of the tree to enable that top section to be as bold as we want it to be. And now as we've built up the values to where we want them to be, now is the time to pick up the pastel sticks that give you richer, stronger colour. They're loaded with pigment and they can be the ones that really make the painting shine. And I save those strokes to the end when I've got all the base work done and everything's in position then I can apply stronger, more powerful strokes. So in the end, people just see mostly those final strokes, but they don't realize everything that went on before in establishing the tonal values and the colors, the subtle shades that lie underneath those strokes. That's the important thing. And so if there ever was to be such a thing as a basic formula for pastels, that would be it. A base tone that's the right tonal and colour value, followed by some shadow tones to make the structure and the shape, and then adding some highlights for the opposite end of the scale to show where the light is hitting, and then some accent colour over the top of that. I'm using this violet blue here just to represent some of the atmosphere that is existing between the viewer and that distant cliff. I'm just throwing that back a little bit in order to bring the tree forward. Notice the sense of depth that I've created by using those atmospheric colours, those pale blues, to skim over the cliff. 
and that has now thrown the cliff back which enables the foreground trees to stand out against it giving us much more perspective the foreground trees have much richer bolder color in them compared to the cliff and that's the way we're going to create depth in this painting and now getting back to the hornbill which has almost become lost in some of the pastel all around it so you notice here I'm just taking a paintbrush a bristle paintbrush and just cleaning up some of the surface before I apply a new layer of pastel one of the reasons I'm doing this is because pastel colors can be easily polluted by other colors particularly if it's like a yellow or a white or something that's very pale and bright whenever you're using colors like that in pastel you need to be very mindful of the fact that any dark pastel colors can very easily pollute those colors and spoil the nice bright effect that you're wanting to make so particularly here we're dealing with color and tonal opposites the green is very dark the bill of the hornbill is very light so we don't want any com um, contamination between the pastel on either side of the boundary there so what I'm doing here is just cleaning up those edges before using the orange Conti pencil just to refine the shape a little bit we need to bring the tonal value down a little bit because the bird is backlit so I'm just using this warm orange just to do that before using the white around the edges to emphasize the backlit nature of our subject Take note of how sharp my pencil is here. Very, very important. Everybody I teach, nobody has a sharp enough pencil. This is at least how sharp your pencil should be when you're putting in some detail. Very important.
and now moving down the hornbill we're putting another layer we're trying to get the colour and the tone to be as rich as we want it to be but at the same time we don't want to lose any of our lines so I'm just redrawing the edges of the feathers to make sure that we've got all the feathers in place so what we've got here was uh, the base tone colour then refining the detailed edges of the feathers and then we want to look at highlights and accent colours that's basically the process that you'll see me using here. Doing feathers and complex things like this can sometimes be really taxing on your mind so whenever I tackle a very complex part of a painting I make sure I'm feeling good and feeling fresh. It's not always possible sometimes you have to work through when you're not at your very best so what you have to do is be very um, self-aware and only tackle these very technical areas when you really feel up to it and when you're less than a hundred percent that's when you might tackle a much more easier section of a painting like say laying in some some of those background tones in other parts of this picture but when you're feeling good then go for the more difficult technical parts such as drawing these feathers Okay, I put the hornbill in uh, and that sort of sets the tone for the painting and sort of inspires me to tackle the rest of this big jungle scene. <clears throat> a little note on working in pastel mat. You probably noticed that I put a lot of fine layers down and things, getting to the right colour and tone. That's crucial. But there's another reason for it as well, and that is that pastel mat is always more effective when you've got a nice smooth layer down. At first it's a bit bitty and uh, you know it doesn't seem like the greatest surface in the world but once you've got a, a nice even coverage it becomes silky smooth and that's going to make working this jungle now on these bits a lot quicker and a lot easier because you can just go into it with the pastel pencil and pick out the shadows. I'm going to use a black pencil um, but that will mix with the greens that are in there, so it won't look jet black. Uh, it's another reason to have you know, a nice layer of colour underneath, because you're always mixing in that layer. Let me show you a little bit closer up. It's 
starting to get to grips with this one now. Um, it's a long job, but it's starting to come together. I'm using this um, Stabilo Carbothello number 655, it's like a brick red. Um, and I'm just here and there, just dotting in little bits of brick, this brick red, all, all over this area. It just, just brings out the warmth in the picture. It's very important that, you know, just subtle, subtle things like that can really, really lift the colour scheme of the picture. And that's, that's where I'm, where I'm at around here. I've also put the brick red all over the tree trunks. Just a little layer. Very, very light, like this. Just a little, little layer. And it just lifts the trees, it just warms them up. And now we move to the cliffs on the left hand side of the painting. Much the same process as we did over on the right hand side. Just a balancing act really. I mean you've got to establish the topography and the, the actual shape of the stonework. But not just that, you've got to throw it back with atmospherics all the time, managing it. And at the same time also managing the level of uh, sharp detail whether the you know it's too sharp or too soft we've just got to get that balance just exactly right that's why there seems to be a lot of layering and a lot of messing around with it because it's a balancing act balancing all these things the atmospheric perspective has to be just right because if it is then it's going to make the foreground jungle stand out against it and that's that's what we want I'm a huge advocate of using these pure prismatic colours like the cyans, the magentas um, when I'm trying to convey atmosphere. It would be a poor do just to, just to use the white and just to leave it with that sort of flat grey. We want to convey that uh, this is actually light we're trying to portray and light of course in an atmosphere splits prismatically and you get these beautiful prismatic colors that's why i was using that uh, rich purple there very lightly as a glaze Moving further down the painting now, you can see in the bottom centre of your screen that I've already been thinking about and have roughly sketched in a second great hornbill. I thought it needed that for the composition. There's a primary hornbill to the right of the painting, which is slightly high up in the canopy, and then I wanted another bird to be sort of swooping through the lower levels of the trees I thought that would be a create a nice balance but notice how it's just a very light sort of sketch in with the pencil because it could be that I change my mind and then it won't you know be a very difficult matter just to simply 
put some green over it or something like that. So there's nothing's nothing's done hard and solidly at this stage. I've just sketched it loosely in and I'm taking my time. I'm concentrating on the trees, but every now and then I'm stepping back from the painting, having a good look at it and considering things like the overall compositional appeal of the painting. So having that there just loosely sketched in is very important at this stage. I'm considering here yet another boundary. You could call it a boundary between the distant canopy and where it meets the cliffs. There needs some fine balance. It needs to be just the right amount of sort of greeny grey just to give it that distance um, before I can put some of the more bolder strokes over the top for the nearer branches. And this brings us to the end of the second part of the DVD. I hope you're finding it helpful. And for some more interesting pastelling information, I'll see you in part three. <laughs>